Welcome back, everybody. Now it's time to once again head into Uncharted Waters. The only time I sampled Mega Man X7 was way back in high school. I rented it one time, but I never got past the intro stage. And honestly, I cannot remember why. Maybe I got distracted by schoolwork? It wasn't like me to just drop something so early on, especially a rental? <laughs> that shit was coming out of my pocket. What kind of money did I have as a teenager? Jack and shit, that's what. So now I'm gonna finally see what I left behind so long ago. And just to reiterate, I will be looking at the Legacy Collection version on the PlayStation 4. So despite wanting to end things with Mega Man X5, the series continued without Keiji Inafune's input, and in 2003, Mega Man X jumped into the PlayStation 2, making the first time the series was going into the third dimension. Not something exclusive to the X series, of course. Capcom was already well familiar with what they had in mind for a 3D Mega Man title with the Mega Man Legends lineup. I have no opinion on these, at least not yet, also not counting a Let's Play we did on SGB a few years back, but occasional jank notwithstanding, the Legends games are remembered fondly in the community. People are still hoping for a Legends 3, let that speak for how much they care about it. But Mega Man X ain't Mega Man Legends, so how does Mega Man X7 handle that leap into 3D? The answer? Well, if we're gonna start visually, not very well. It was only a matter of time before they would stop using sprites and stick to 3D models for everything, so I won't knock the decision to do so, I get it, it's just, when comparing to the other games beforehand, both on the SNES and PS1, it's a step down. Now, because it is 3D, we get some pretty dynamic shots on occasion, so the action can be more in your face, and some levels have a pretty cool theme, like Snipe Man Eater's Cyberfield, and that's really it. Most of the other areas are fine, totally passable as far as design goes, but there's this overall bleakness that reeks throughout. I'm not talking about the intentional kind of bleak, I mean more of the dull sort of bleak that I think is par for the course when it comes to 2.5D games that have run-of-the-mill setup. Now, those who've been following this channel for some time know I have a bit of bias towards sprite-based games. Not saying I detest 2.5D games entirely, it's just often visually, I don't think they hold a candle without some sort of visual flair over the top aesthetic. Mega Man X's visuals were always sort of rooted in, I don't want to say gritty realism because you fight a giant dragon for Christ's sakes, but you get what I mean. It always had a darker setting, and in 3D that's even more apparent, for better or worse. We should go over the story before I continue on. So here's something a little different for you. Our adventure doesn't begin with X, but rather newcomer Axel, a member of the Maverick Hunter group called Red Alert, who ain't afraid to get their hands dirty when it comes to hunting Mavericks. Which doesn't mean anything, really, because as far as I'm aware, the Maverick Hunters always killed their targets as well, so what the hell makes Red Alert so different? Axel's had enough of Red Alert's increasingly violent aggression and wants out, and after dealing with some giant robots, Axel runs into Zero and is soon taken to Maverick Hunter HQ. There he meets X, who after years of bloodshed and flashy explosions, finally decided to step down from the action and yearn to find a more peaceful solution. Oh yes, you can't even play as Mega Man X in Mega Man X7 without going through some hoops properly, which I'll cover later. Anyway, the leader of Red Alert, known as Red, contacts Maverick Hunter HQ and demands that Axel be returned. With Axel refusing, Red decides to make a little game out of the whole thing. He will release some Mavericks currently under Red Alert captivity and challenges the Maverick Hunters to hunt down as many as possible to win custody of Axel. Is this a court hearing? But now that we got Mavericks running amok, Zero heads into action immediately with Axel following right behind him as he wants to prove his worth to the Maverick Hunters and feels responsible for his current predicament. X, on the other hand, refuses to even budge and wonders why Reploids must continue to fight on. She's, it really made X into a whiny bitch in this game. I mean, I understand. He has gone through a lot throughout the series. He's fought a lot, he's killed a lot, but he's always reached it and found his resolve, understanding that sometimes you have to fight. You know, there are some issues that just can't be talked out of sometimes, but god damn it, they could have made X sound a little less like a wanting child. We've made this mistake time and time again. Why must Reploids continue this accursed cycle of aggression? Actually, while we're on the subject of voice acting, well, it's good that we have an English dub this time around, and the script isn't swimming in typos and grammatical errors, but fuck me. Folks either are overperforming or are bored out of their minds. X, I, I don't know what direction Peter Von Gaum was given for his performance. Just because they're robots doesn't mean you have to put in a robotic performance. Axel, ugh, I immediately recognize the voice. It's Lena Hart, who I only know from Musashi Samurai Legend, and I'm sure she's a sweet person, but I guess she only has one voice for feisty guys. My name's Musashi. I'm gonna be a famous samurai someday! I always thought you and X were so cool! I wanna fight! I want to be a maverick hunter! I don't want to harp on it for too long because I understand that sometimes it isn't the actor or the actress, it's the direction. And they all got bills to pay. I mean, Cygnus is voiced by Robert Belgrade, a la carte from Symphony of the Night, and I love that man's baritone, even though it's not as distinct here. And a part of me likes Sigma's Dr. Claw impression? Would you be willing to place a wager on my little idea? Oh, yeah, Sigma's the main bad guy here. <laughs> oh, 
would have seen that coming. This time he's taken an interest in Axel, or rather Axel's unique ability to copy a Reploid's DNA and transform into an exact duplicate. Only Reploids of his size though, kind of limiting the whole thing in more ways than one, believe me. But it does make for a cool moment in his ending. Sigma does his usual manipulative shtick, of course, and he's relatively back to normal, by the way. None of that zombie Sigma from X6, which I really liked, but it's back to the status quo for this one. But eventually Axel, Zero, and X wipe out the Mavericks, take on Red and Thwart Sigma again, all in a day's work. And then Axel finds a new home with the Maverick Hunters. Really, all we're missing here is the three guys running towards the camera like in Batman and Robin. This is a real nothing sort of story. Axel's the biggest focus, clearly, who he is, what he can do, his chance at redemption, which is perfectly fine, but this character can be a tad insufferable and obnoxious. The typical hothead, who's also the central focus, so it wears thin after a bit. Zero and X are just going through the motions, especially Zero, who honestly is just there. X has a small arc with the whole non-violent approach, but yeah, that doesn't last long. The game is called Mega Man X7, so it wouldn't be a Mega Man X game without the titular character. Now, to the game's credit, I feel this is really the first time they emphasize how strong X can be when he puts his mind to it. Every game goes on about how X's potential can make him the most dangerous thing on the planet, and it's true, we always saw that through gameplay with the special weapons, armor upgrades, but now it's somewhat integrated into the story. After you rescue enough Reploids or finish off the eight Mavericks of the day, X decides to lace up his boots and rejoin the action again, and he's easily the strongest character in the game. His charge shot is disgustingly large, his armor upgrades give him the beefiest defense, and my god, they finally got rid of that stupid security shift from X5 and X6, so when you find an upgrade, you get the benefits immediately. Thank you. But this has a few snags. Again, X is only available after rescuing enough Reploids or finishing off the eight Mavericks. So if you want him immediately, you need to jump around stages a whole lot without killing Mavericks just to unlock the blue guy. But if you wait until the Mavericks are dead, then you only have him for the final bit of the game. And all those heart tanks you collected most likely went to X or Zero, leaving X with a pitiful amount of health. And secondly, even though X is great, he completely undermines Axel. It's generally not a good thing to introduce a character and then make him obsolete at some point. It totally makes Axel feel like a lesser Mega Man X. I mean, he can shoot faster than X and he can use special weapons like the guy too, but he can't charge special weapons, doesn't get armor upgrades, and the one thing that makes Axel unique, that copy ability I mentioned, one of the most underutilized techniques I've ever seen in a video game. He can copy a Reploid of similar stature and take advantage of their special techniques to, I guess, kill robots in a different way. I only used this about three times throughout the whole game, and it was only to rescue certain Reploids locked behind specific obstacles. Just copying Reploids is such a chore. You have to finish an enemy off with Axel's copy shot so that it drops its DNA. And this game doesn't give health bars for the common trash, meaning you have to carefully gauge how much damage you've done with your regular weapon before you finish it off with a copy shot. But that just leads into the second problem. There isn't much to gain from copying things. They're too limiting. You want to copy this thing and slowly throw rocks at shit, or what about this? This samurai that makes you walk on molasses. No, I'd rather just stick to my guns, literally. And Axel was just more mobile by default. Maybe I can copy one of these guys and fly across the stage? No, it's much faster to just dash on the ground and my weapon is more accurate to boot. Granted, Axel ended up becoming my go-to character anyway. With the rapid fire turned on, he can crank out a lot of bullets at a given time and against smaller foes, there's nothing better. He can dash, he can air dash, he can wall climb like the others, but he can also float in the air for a few seconds that gives him decent aerial coverage. But you have to make sure you're holding down the jump button as soon as you take off. Otherwise, you can't hover, period, and fuck, that is annoying. There was a couple of times I counted where the hover could have helped correct up my jumper spacing, but since I didn't hold the button down upon jumping in the first place, I couldn't do it at all. And for some shitty reason, the air dash doesn't work when you're transitioning between camera angles, like right here. Like my air dash just doesn't work here and I'm confused as to why. But when you rescue the right kind of Reploids, you not only get health and ammo extensions, but you can also unlock special chips. With these, as Alia will constantly remind you about, you can level up three specific attributes, your power, your speed, and your special traits. Basically, with enough chips, you can make your weapon stronger, how fast you can shoot, how much health you recover, how much damage you take, and all that, and then some. And honestly, I don't mind it. I would've preferred the shop method like in Mega Man Extreme 2, but this is fine. And I didn't find rescuing hostages to be too cumbersome. Unlike X6, where you only had to worry about nightmares killing off hostages, everything can kill a hostage now, so if they take a measly blast, they're done for. But from my experience, most hostages were placed in relatively easy to spot locations. Like the moment you see a hostage spawn, if you make a beeline straight for them, you'll rescue them just fine. My only snag was with Flame High in our stage, which seems to have a fetish for killing hostages now that I think about it. The ones next to the time explosives were giving me shit because you have to jump through so many hurdles just to get to them before the bomb goes off. That is until I accidentally discovered that if I off screen the bomb before it detonates, it still goes off, but the hostage remains intact, easy for the picking. Ah, using that old school Crash Bandicoot jank to my advantage. And with enough chip upgrades, Axel becomes quite formidable. His default weapon easily becomes one of the best, and the auto lock feature ensures that I don't have to really aim, I just need to be close enough, which kind of goes against the nature of a long range fighter, and the auto aim itself will be pretty fucking fickle, but I can still get results. It's better than what I can do with Zero because, jeez Louise, talk about a drop in effectiveness. I barely use the dude. I don't like using the dude. He's a far cry from his PS1 days. This combo game has no sense of flow. The combos themselves don't nearly have the same amount of coverage as before, which I think you really notice with his aerial attacks, and in 3D sections, goodbye with that lack of flow I just mentioned, makes it harsh to gauge the amount of distance you need to 
to strike multiple enemies down at once. Nah, man, he, he was too clunky for my liking, which disappoints me so much given how much I enjoyed his playstyle previously. He's good for some platforming, his double jump is great for bypassing things, but that's all I could muster before I permanently switched him out with X when I unlocked him. Uh, listen, when it comes to how the game is set up, Mega Man X7, you know, isn't that far removed from the previous games. Eight stages, eight mavericks, final confrontation with Sigma at the end, multiple characters, you can switch between characters on the fly, ride armors, ride bikes, upgrades, it's got all that. If you were to ask me on what my biggest problem with Mega Man X7 was, it's so slow and boring. Oh my god, and I'm not talking about the load times either, though if you are going to play this at all, please play it on the Legacy Collection where the load times are drastically cut down. On the PS2, this game has a horrendous amount of long load screens, and don't get me wrong, the amount of load screens is the same on Legacy Collection, but nowhere near as stretched out. You look up meandering in the dictionary, and you'll find Mega Man X7. My first warning sign was as early as the save screen. What do I want to do? I want to save the game. Do you want to save the game? Yeah, that's why I picked it. So I saved my game, but then I'm taking back to the choices again. What do I want to do? Return to the stage select screen. Return to the stage select screen. Oh my God, yes! And I have to do this every single time I exit a stage. Okay, I got a chip from a hostage. Alia tells me that I can use this to increase my attributes. Okay, that's great. Oh, here's another chip in. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is Alia gonna tell me what chips do each time I get one? I know how they work, so let's get a move on. Come on! This feeling, this, this walking through a thick swamp feeling stinks up the whole game. Story sequences drag their asses off because of the immeasurable amount of pausing between dialogue and compared to previous games, this game has cutscenes after every boss. Okay, there's nothing wrong with adding a bit more story. Axel's the new guy and all that, so we gotta spend some time with him. They probably want to give him more attention, but most of it is superfluous. Axel's regret for his past actions. I get that, I understand that. Can we please, please speed things up here? Maverick bosses, dear God, these guys have so much health. And their weaknesses don't nearly have the same impact as before. It's in past games, when you use the weakness, you stop the boss in their tracks, you reset their patterns, lather, rinse, repeat. It breaks the battle, but I always thought that was the point. You discovered their weakness, so you make them weak. If you want the full challenge, then stick to your default weapon. But in X7, you either don't have enough ammo to finish a boss off, or the weapon itself sucks against the boss, period. My default weapon ended up being the weapon of choice for most, if not all, these guys. And let me tell you, man. This game is just a mile a minute! These guys take so long to kill, and you gotta do it twice because of the traditional boss rush near the end of the game. And yeah, some of these guys love to talk, but not in the endearing sort of way. Even if you never played Mega Man X7, you probably knew someone who brought up Flame High in art. No? Well, I'm sorry, but. Just listen to that. Listen to that. Did nobody think that sounded broken? I turned the volume down because I got so annoyed with it. And yeah, I definitely heard it beforehand, but fuck. Technically, technically, I stress, there isn't much wrong as far as the game structure goes. Nothing's broken, well, except him. Burn. But the things that are wrong end up affecting the whole feel of the game. When it comes to control, specifically 2D sections, it's what I expect from past experiences. I could jump just fine, I can shoot just fine, but then comes wall jumping, and I don't know, something feels off. The way I snap back towards the wall leaves my control feeling herky jerk, and a couple of times I found myself getting stuck on the edge of the floor. When the game transitions into 3D, that's when things get downright problematic. X7 is old school when it comes to camera control. Instead of using the right analog stick, you have to use the shoulder buttons to turn the camera. What's the right analog stick used for? Switching weapons. I can't help but feel someone accidentally got those two functions reversed. I can accommodate for it. I've played plenty of platformers with shoulder button cameras, but I can't do shit about the times I gotta deal with a fixed camera. It's either too close or the angle given just blows. In stages like Wing Crowangs, it's both. You have to jump across these planes high in the sky, but this angle fucks with my depth perception. I can't tell if the plane is on the same level or higher up. And sometimes when I'm on the wings, my jump just doesn't work. Like, what the fuck happened there? If I had a free range camera here, this wouldn't be too much of an issue, but that isn't the case. And every time you die here, you have to watch the same cutscene of you entering the stage over and over again as if this game wasn't dragging enough. But that's why I dislike about the 3D sections the most. It's not the control, it's not just the camera, is that they're so uninteresting. The 3D space really puts emphasis on how slow your default movement speed is. So when I can get away with it, I dash at every opportunity just to move things along. There are times where the 3D environment gives you plenty to explore. In fact, I quite enjoyed those moments where I could wall jump in 3D to find hidden stuff off screen. And every time you see something suspicious in the distance, it most likely has a hostage to rescue that has a chip upgrade. So give your dash a workout and go for it. So those are few and far between because sometimes they can be overly expansive with nothing to show for it. They can have pathways that end up being just as linear as the 2D sections, making the whole dimensional shift feel needless. Or sometimes their entire gimmick is so bland. The ride bike section in Ride Borski is just there. You pick up some bombs, you rescue some hostages, but for some reason can't turn 180 degrees. Fucking hell, the first level and the final stretch goes on forever with the steamroller thing slowly making his way towards you. And it's pretty bad when SpongeBob's Night of the Robot is more appealing than this auto scroller. And well, guys, I definitely see what I've been missing, and I'm happy to say it wasn't much. Mega Man X7 is often considered to be the worst of the bunch, and 
I'm inclined to agree, but only because I absolutely despise how slow and forgettable it is. You know, Mega Man X6 is a broken shit show, as I pointed out, but it doesn't take forever, nor does it feel like it takes forever to just finish the game. I stress though, that's only when you know how the game works, because it still has a shitload going against it, like these assholes in Blaze Heatnik stage. Mega Man X7, it takes forever to get going, takes forever to go through menus, takes forever to clear the eight stages, takes forever to kill things. It's too slow for its own good. And a game that bores me is a game that fails. Mega Man X7, while not a technical train wreck, is boring. And what else can I say after that? I'll tell you what, two more games left for this marathon. That's what I'll tell you. And the next game is, well, we're at this point already, but it's the last traditional Mega Man X game. And once again, I'll be heading to unfamiliar territory when I take a look at Mega Man X8 for the PlayStation 2. And once again, I will be looking at the Legacy Collection version on the PS4, just to let you guys know. With all that said, thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night and take care. Oh,